Hi, everybody. Today, I want to introduce you to some of the cool things that happen at the very first stages of nervous system development. The nervous system is one of the first systems of the body to start developing and one of the last to finish. Because of this, there is a lot of room for differences in development due to both genetic and environmental influences. This means that the nervous system is also especially sensitive to teratogens, or chemicals that can cause harm to the developing fetus throughout the pregnancy. The first step of life is fertilization. A sperm and an egg join to become a zygote, and that zygote starts dividing into balls of cells called a blastocyst. In the second week of life, some of the cells organize into a structure called an embryonic disc. In mammals, this has three layers, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. And each of these layers become different body systems and organs. The one that we're most interested in is the outer layer, or the ectoderm, because this is the part that becomes the central nervous system. A lip starts to form on the surface and creating a groove. By 21 days, this groove starts to close over, forming what we call the neural tube. And this neural tube will become the brain and spinal cord. One well-known issue that can happen at this time is what we call neural tube defects, such as spina bifida, a condition in which the neural tube doesn't fully close over. Research has shown that one cause of this problem can be folic acid deficiency, which is preventable by taking vitamins or getting it in the diet. However, the problem is you may not know you're pregnant before this time in the embryonic development. So if there's any chance at all you or a loved one might become pregnant, a good diet is really important. Undifferentiated nerve cells start to be produced at the rate of 250,000 per minute on average throughout pregnancy. This is a mind-blowing number. If that seems like a lot, it is. You'll need more than 100 billion neurons by the time you're born. Once produced, they travel along tiny threads to their final locations, where the cells then differentiate into the appropriate types of cells for that location. Those cell types form different parts of the brain and spinal cord. At birth, you have many cells, and they are more interconnected than is necessary. This allows uh, you to adopt a strategy where it's better to adjust to the environment. Since your brain doesn't know what environment you'll be in until after you're born, this is important. As a baby, you stop producing so many cells. In fact, you undergo a process of pruning synapses and removing extra cells through apoptosis. Apoptosis allows you to reabsorb those proteins and use them other places. You see, the brain is an energy-hungry organ, weighing only about 2% of your body weight, but using approximately 20% of your energy. So it doesn't make sense to have a bunch of extra brain cells laying around doing nothing. So unused ones get removed. Now you may have heard that you only use 10% of your brain. Well, that's a myth called the 10% myth. And anybody who tells you that, uh, you can proudly tell them that they can do whatever they want, but you use the whole thing. I think of this process of pruning as analogous to pruning a topiary bush. All the excess branches and leaves create chaos and pruning it away creates the form that you need. Like painting a building, one of the last steps that happens to nervous tissue is myelination, or adding the myelin sheath 
to the nerve fibers, like insulation on a wire, that aids in transmitting signals. Your brain doesn't finish myelination of some areas until you're in your third decade of life. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Further, your brain continues to grow, change, and adapt to your environment throughout your life. Neural development doesn't have an end. You continue to produce new neurons, though at a much slower pace, throughout your life, and make new connections between existing neurons. People who have brain damage can have remarkable recovery of function as the brain adjusts to its new circumstances. Okay, well, I went beyond, a little bit beyond early development, and I skipped a bunch in the middle, uh, but I hope this video has been useful. Uh, if so, hit like, and you'll get five free cool points. Hit subscribe, and you'll get ten cool points, and you'll be notified of new videos uh, as we post them. Until next time. Let's see, we have here one ukulele, six cans Play-Doh, two extra long slinkies, one tax write-off notebook, one electric kazoo, one live chicken, Seven.